Did you hear that Jason Benson will be in town for the fourth time? Asked my friend Jeff. It won't last long, but the city fathers decided to make him the chief marshal of the parade. Mayor Kane did it last year and will likely do it again next year. What's more American than a war hero in an Independence Day parade? No, Jeff, I didn't hear that, I answered quietly. He must have climbed quite high up the military ladder by now. Many years ago, he was a captain. He's a colonel, and soon he'll have to rise even higher, Jeff agreed. He was wounded in Baghdad a year ago and has all kinds of medals and awards. Look, he'll eventually run the Pentagon. I thought about Jeff's news for a minute. Jason Benson was our urban version of Jack Armstrong, the All-American boy. He played quarterback on his high school football team and shortstop in baseball. He graduated first in his class, and Division I universities competed for him. He received an appointment to West Point and graduated near the top of his class and also played football and baseball. This was all very good for him. He was an accomplished, extremely capable athlete, soldier, and citizen. I had to admit it. There was a lot in him that was not in me. Normally, this wouldn't be a big deal to me. If it had been anyone else, I would have been truly happy for his success. You probably guessed my problem. He dated Sarah, who was now my wife, when they were in high school. Back then, everyone seemed to feel that Sarah was his ideal match. She was also an incredible athlete, the valedictorian of her class, right behind Jason, and the most beautiful girl Williamsport had ever seen. Somehow they broke up after Jason went to West Point and Sarah went to Temple. They never got along. At school, I was two years ahead of them. I wasn't a cool genius, but I did well. I studied engineering at a public school. As computers became an increasingly integral part of my daily life, I became increasingly drawn to programming. I worked for several companies before I got the courage to start my own. I still don't understand how I managed to convince Sarah to marry me, but I did it. It was the greatest achievement of my life, or at least the best thing I've ever done myself. Our two daughters were a combined effort and a source of great pride for both of us. Sarah never talked much about Jason. She knew I didn't like this part of her life. Invariably, well-meaning people mentioned his name from time to time. I was always amazed that these people seemed to think that I should admire and idolize Jason and acknowledge how great it would be if he and Sarah were together. It was like I had no feelings or value when it came to Jason. No one seemed to doubt that Sarah would have been much better off if she had managed to keep Jason. To their credit, Sarah's parents never suggested anything even remotely close to this scenario. I even saw Sarah's mother get really angry at a family picnic years ago when a cousin implied that Sarah should marry Jason. Only a fool would say something so offensive and ignorant, she reproached her stunned cousin before the suddenly silent meeting. If you knew what a wonderful husband and father Greg is, you would never have made such a stupid statement. Sarah smiled at her mother's sudden outburst and squeezed my hand under the table. Sarah always treated me with love and respect and never acknowledged any hint that I was not the best husband she could find. So, what was my problem? This was the long shadow of Jason Benson, a hero and an overall great guy. I always seemed to be compared to him and found to be inferior, both in my mind and in the minds of the madding crowd. My conversation with Jeff ended when my daughter, April, stole the other team's basketball and passed everyone else. Both of my daughters played summer league basketball. April was very fast and aggressive. The girls who played on the other team really didn't want to play against her. I've only ever seen one girl who could successfully dodge a basketball past her, and that was my eldest daughter, June. June was long-legged and moved with an easy grace that made her seem relaxed as she played. She planned to attend Temple in the fall on a volleyball scholarship. It could have been basketball, but she preferred volleyball. April was a junior in high school and a key cog on a basketball team that hoped to win district and make it to states. I never get tired of watching my daughters play sports. They were good at every sport. They always gave everything to him. This is how competitive sports are designed. Combined with the speed and athleticism inherited from Sarah, they were simply the best. 
June recently became top of her class. This really helped the coaches decide to award her a scholarship. April competed for top honors in her class. I got out of the stands when the game was over. The girls shook hands and hugged their rivals. I waited for them before heading towards the parking lot. Not a bad game, isn't it, Dad? June grinned. April didn't even let them pass the ball past half court. Finally, the coach asked her to give the defenders a break and retreat a little. Yes, she spoke like you, Dad. She said that we play not only for fun, but also to win. She didn't want us to ruin the other team's morale by crushing them too much, April chuckled. June almost stopped shooting after the first half to give them a chance to get into the game, and she was the top scorer. Well, girls, Summer League should be a good time for all the kids. When we started, we discussed what the goals would be and decided to promote sportsmanship and team play, I recalled. Coach Simons did a great job today. You always try to make everyone happy, Dad, except when you play against us. You never let April or me go when we play at home, June said. That's because you're both mentally and physically strong. I wanted you to learn to never give up and play as hard as you can. In school league matches, no one takes you easy, do they? I asked. You must know what competition you are participating in and play accordingly. Do you think I would succeed in business if I didn't let my clients win at golf most of the time? It's very difficult, Dad. It might help when you're losing to your clients, but June can kick your ass at golf. I don't think you'll let them win. April laughed. You're not the best golfer in the world. Anyway, young lady, I admonished April. I know enough to look like I'm trying my best, and I'm gracious when I lose. This is the secret to winning business on the golf course. It's a good thing you explained this to June, Dad, because she's going to be kicking ass and losing business all over the place. She does the opposite. She looks like she's not even trying and plays great, April bragged to her sister. She needs to watch you more closely to learn some of your moves. We pulled into the driveway, so I didn't even try to think of an appropriate response. I have always been able to coach and teach kids sports better than when I played with them. Sarah was a natural athlete, and the girls inherited that from her. I was the one who had to learn every trick of every game to try to compete. Sarah drove in after us. The girls started telling her about their day and how their game went. Following them into the house, I shook my head in amazement. How did I manage to get three such incredible women into my life? Sarah was the top dog at a local hotel and conference center that was part of a large chain. She started working there after completing her diploma in hotel management. Her parents wanted her to become a lawyer, but Sarah knew what she wanted and went for it. Like everything else she tried, she was very good at it. She reached the top two years ago and even recently turned down a promotion that would have required her to move to Kansas. Was there anything special today, Sarah? I asked. You looked a little more dressed up than usual, and you had to stay late. Are the big corporate guys in town for the holiday? No. But you are really observant, Greg, Sarah admitted. The day after tomorrow is the 4th, and we always sponsor the expedition of the Grand Marshal. This year, the newspaper wanted to print some photos before the parade. Why did my stomach suddenly hurt? I realized that it was what Sarah didn't say that gave me cause for concern. Sarah, was our golden boy and war hero there for the photographs? You seem to have forgotten to mention that he will be in town and will also be the grand marshal for the parade. Is there a chance that he will star with you? I asked. Sarah played with her hands and looked to see if there were any girls in the room. She rarely showed nervousness, so this caught my attention. Jason was there, Greg. Our hotel donated a suite for our local military hero. It's just good public relations. His parents left Williamsport several years ago. He had nowhere to stay. We decided to donate the apartment to a local man who was wounded in the service of our country and serves as Grand Marshal for the 4th of July parade, Sarah reasoned, her voice rising slightly. It's just good business and there's no reason to worry about it. Then why are you so worried? I answered immediately. Not really. Well, maybe a little, Sarah conceded. We just always tried to avoid the topic of Jason. I know how you feel about us dating in school, and how annoying it is when people, even after all these years, continue to throw his name around at you and me. It's strictly business, Greg. 
You are my husband and the only man I love or have ever loved. You must believe. It's very nice to hear this from you, Sarah, and I want to believe you. The question that comes to mind is this. Why did you feel the need to hide information about Jason's return from me? I just told you that I know this is a sore subject and I didn't want you to worry or get upset, Sarah reasoned. He just doesn't mean anything to me. In that case, I shouldn't have any reason to be upset, and certainly you shouldn't have any reason to hide any information from me, right? I asked it. Well, no, Greg, not really. I'm glad we're discussing all this openly. It seems like Jason's ghost has been hanging over us ever since we got married. Or longer, I added. So are there any other events planned with the participation of Marshall? Colonel Benson will be the commander-in-chief at the parade, and the next day at an informal reception at the hotel, Sarah admitted. The hotel will provide snacks and drinks, and people will have the opportunity to ingratiate themselves with him. I assume you will be the mistress of this ingratiation? I asked. Yes, Greg. I'm the caretaker at the hotel. This is part of my job. If anyone's going to reap the rewards of goodwill and push, it's damn well me, Sarah said. Do you have any problems with this? I don't think it matters, Sarah. The die is cast and plans are made. I have not been privy to them, but I will survive as long as what you tell me is true. He doesn't mean anything to you, right? You're not going to stare obsequiously like a gentle doe, are you? Sarah showed clear signs of annoyance at my statement until she caught my little pun. Then she broke into a smile and hugged me. Greg, I love you so much. You're the only male who's ever attracted that doe's gaze or any other part of her body, she laughed. I hope this applies to everything, not just your eyes, Sarah, but also everything that may be one of a kind. I smiled. You know that's all I have, honey, Sarah cooed. It's all unique, and it's all yours. As we walked through the living room, we explained to the girls that we were too tired to eat and were going to bed. They'll have to make do with what's left of last night's roast beef. Too tired? June laughed. Then we better cover our ears. Last time you were so tired, you kept us up half the night. Oh my God. Sarah blushed when I closed the door to our bedroom. Maybe it's better for us to wait until the girls fall asleep? We don't want them to think we're doing this. They already know that we do it, as you put it, Sarah, I noted, touching her gently. They think we're in love. Well, we're not misleading them, Sarah sighed, unbuttoning the buttons on my shirt. Just don't make me moan so loudly. The next evening I casually asked Sarah how her day was while she was preparing dinner. She knew I was really asking about Jason and if anything had happened between them. Everything went well, Greg. Jason has become even more determined and energetic than in high school. I think being an officer and going to war honed his natural leadership skills, Sarah replied. Sarah, let's get something straight right now, I quickly replied. When I told you that I expected you to be open and honest about Jason, I sure as hell didn't mean for you to tell me what an incredible guy he is. I want to hear your honest opinion about what a pompous ass he is and how glad you are that you married me. That's the kind of honesty I'm looking for here. Greg, this guy may be an army ranger and a war hero, all tan and lean and tougher than an old piece of raw hide, but he's no match for you. This is more like the truth. Tell me more, I asked. Of course. The President of the United States called Jason this afternoon, congratulating him and thanking him for his meritorious service. But two years ago, you were Vice President of the Elks Club. Jason isn't even a member of the club. Sarah started with a straight face. I see. I nodded. This damn guy probably thinks he's too good for the club. He will certainly never achieve the status of treasurer of a football club. What a loser. That's exactly what I was thinking, dear. Sarah agreed. Tomorrow after the parade, he'll probably ruin his interview with Fox News, too. The book he is working on will be very boring. There is a high probability that he will not become a general before 50. That's what I'm talking about, I almost shouted. I have to admit, Greg, it really helps when we tell the truth and discuss things like adults, Sarah laughed. No guy compares to my boyfriend. I grabbed Sarah, pulled her to my chest, and hugged her tightly. 
When she raised her head to look at me, I pressed my lips firmly to hers. Sarah answered, and her mouth began to open slightly to give me access. Why don't you two get a room? April moaned as she entered. This is the kitchen where my food is prepared. Sarah blushed and tried to move away from me, but I didn't let go. She glanced at me quickly. I kissed her again. Dad, you really love Mom, don't you? April grinned. Do you think I'll ever find a guy like you who can love me like that? Not until you graduate from college, I exclaimed. I think you will have a problem fighting them off. Sarah gasped, and April blushed. I felt myself blush, turned around, and headed towards the garage. I suddenly remembered that the backyard needs to be trimmed. Raising daughters is not always easy. The parade was a great success and was covered by television crews on cable news stations. Colonel Benson was a man on the rise. He represented everything the media was looking for on Independence Day. I watched his interview later that evening and had to admit that he spoke well, looked great, and made a man proud to be an American. The day after the parade was hectic. Sarah left early to make sure everything was perfect for the open house they were throwing for Benson. The fact that one of the cable news crews was staying overnight at her hotel didn't do much to reassure her. If her hotel is going to be in the news, it better look perfect. I decided to show Sarah that I really appreciated her and everything she does for me and the girls. I visited Jeff at his jewelry store. I listened to several suggestions and settled on a pair of diamond earrings. Jeff tried to get me to buy the same necklace, but I was already over budget. I wandered around the main conference room, watching the colonel. He was merciful and humble. I have to give him credit. He really made a good impression on the people of his hometown. Sarah oversaw everything and did a great job. It was a well-run business, and the hotel looked good locally. It was supposed to be over by 6, but at 6.30 there were still a few hangers-on and devotees who didn't want to leave until the free food and drink ran out. I knew it would be over soon, so I slipped into Sarah's office. I decided to surprise her with earrings and then invite her to a neighbor's party after dinner where she could show them off to her friends. I had been waiting for Sarah for 15 minutes when I decided to use her bathroom. I had just finished washing my hands when I heard the office door close. I felt my wide smile disappear when I realized it was a man's voice speaking. I didn't close the bathroom door completely, and the conversation was easy to follow. Sarah, I know I keep saying this, but you look amazing. Just being around you drives me crazy. You are still the most beautiful woman I have ever made love to. My stomach churned and I felt sweat beating on my forehead. I felt weak and had to lean on the sink to keep from falling. That's very flattering, Colonel, but I must ask you not to talk to me like that. I'm happily married and I don't want to give the wrong impression, Sarah replied. It was more than 20 years ago and it's better to forget. Sarah, I know you still feel something for me. I've seen it the last few days while we've been working together and please call me Jason, the nasty bastard hero replied. The only reason I agreed to spend my holiday here was to see you again. I have to say it was worth it. I'm sure you wanted the people in your old hometown to have the pleasure of seeing you here in the parade, Jason. You are the hometown boy who did well. Everyone is very proud of your adventures and successes. After all, you are a true war hero, Sarah concluded. Sarah, come to me now, Benson begged. I have to leave early tomorrow morning. Come and let me make love to you again. This will be a special way to thank me for everything I've done for the country and for you, really. I almost threw up. If I start puking, Sarah will know I'm eavesdropping on the conversation. I reminded myself to take slow, deep breaths and manage to regain control of my stomach. I'm married, Jason. My husband will immediately suspect something, Sarah reasoned. He would be extremely upset, to say the least. I saw him hanging around, Sarah. He's not the type to cause trouble. There were hundreds like him under my command. They never challenge me. He won't dare tell you anything, Benson reasoned. Coaching girls in soccer and changing diapers does not prepare a man for battle. I heard the contempt in Benson's voice as he chuckled at his own remark. He didn't seem to have much respect for me. Jason, why don't you stay a few more days if you want to see me more often? Asked my devoted wife. I can leave your room without hassle and for free. I can't, Sarah. 
I have been ordered to report to Washington tomorrow. It's all part of climbing the corporate ladder. I've put more than 20 years and a lot of blood into this business, and I'm already close to it. I'm sure I don't want to ruin everything at this point. Is it true that you rangers have something like never leaving your comrade behind, Jason? Sarah asked with too much enthusiasm to satisfy me. Absolutely right, Sarah. We take an oath and live by it. Without that trust and knowing that our brothers had our backs, we would never have been able to survive. Jason replied with obvious pride. Let's go to my room, Sarah. You have the chance to have a real hero make love to you tonight. That's very tempting, Jason, Sarah replied. There are just a few things that I don't quite understand. Maybe you could explain them to me first? Of course, Sarah, Jason answered quickly. I will be happy to explain everything so that we can quickly move on to a sweet night. Well, Jason, let's start with this. Why do you think that you are so much better than my husband? I know that you trained, went to war, and were decorated many times. Do heroes have to have medals and badges to be a hero? I don't think I understood the question, Benson answered slowly. Your husband never risked his life. He never went to war. He hid behind your skirts, coached girls' soccer, and went to parent-teacher conferences. He really didn't do anything very brave. Greg took over our daughter's soccer team when the coach broke his hip in a car accident and no one else wanted to. He didn't even know the rules, Sarah continued. He studied books and read something on the internet to do this. He had a hard time and made some mistakes, but he kept the team together. He did this for our daughters and the other girls on the team. Greg helped take care of my father after his stroke so that my mother could get some rest. He was never particularly close to his father, but willingly bathed and fed him. What is the reason? Because he loves me. He's my hero, Jason, Sarah said. I'm sure he's a good guy, Sarah. I didn't mean to humiliate him. It's just that, after what I've done all these years, it's hard to have too much respect for men who don't do what I do, Benson replied. That's not a satisfactory answer, Jason. Greg worked nights for a year so he could attend girls' events. He worked two jobs over the next year so we could save enough money for a down payment on our house. He caught our daughter June smoking in the garage with a couple of her friends when she was 16. He put her on his knees in front of them and gave her a good spanking. She cried, said she hated him, and ran to her room. He didn't sleep all night. He was so worried about her. The next day she apologized and promised never to smoke again. Then she hugged him, Sarah recalled. This is how Amen raises his family, Chason. My next question is this. How could you ask me to renounce my vow? You are so proud of your life and are ready to risk it. But you easily invited me to break mine, Sarah said more than hotly. You despise those who break their oath and then ask me to break mine. Then you tell me that you've invested so much time in your career and you don't think I'm worth the risk of losing it, Sarah continued. What about my career and investments? You wouldn't think twice about asking me to risk losing my job and ruining my marriage while you brag to me about your successes? Do you really despise me and my life so much? Is this beneath your dignity? Haven't I spent twenty years building my life, my marriage, my career? She demanded. When you say that, Sarah... I realize that I may have gone a little overboard. You're just so beautiful, and we have such wonderful memories, Benson replied nervously. These wonderful memories belong to you, not me, Jason, Sarah replied. I remember how I regretted that I could not give Greg the honor of being my first man. I remember how self-centered you were. I remember breathing a sigh of relief when you left for West Point and rarely returned to Williamsport. These are my memories. Wow. I had no idea you thought that way, Sarah, Benson replied dryly. If you allow me, I'll go. With these words, I heard the door open and close rather abruptly. I stayed in the bathroom, afraid that Sarah would come in and realize that I had heard the entire conversation. Luckily, I heard the office door open and close again. She left. I waited until I was sure everything was clear and headed to my car. I called Jeff as I walked across the parking lot. I was in the kitchen helping the girls prepare dinner. I sat on pins and needles and waited impatiently when Sarah came in. Sarah, I'm so glad you're home, I exclaimed, hugging her to me. Greg, I was just finishing up some paperwork, Sarah explained. It's not that I didn't do anything. 
I pressed my lips to hers and pressed her tightly to my chest. My heart felt like it was about to burst. After a few minutes, I pulled my lips away from Sarah. Wow, Dad is very glad to see you, isn't he, Mom? June laughed. I hope my husband will greet me the same way after twenty years of marriage. Sarah looked at me intently. I could tell she was trying to pinpoint why I was so glad to see her and why I didn't seem to need any explanation for being late. June, I hope you find a husband like mine, Sarah agreed. He is full of surprises and loves his family very much. I pulled out a small, beautifully wrapped package from my desk drawer and handed it to Sarah. She carefully took it from my hands and stared at it. Mother, open up, April exclaimed. I want to see what it is. Sarah's hands seemed to tremble as she pulled on the wrapper. She threw away the paper and picked up the box. Then she slowly opened it. Three pairs of eyes began to water at the same time. Oohs and ahs filled the room. The girls grabbed the necklace, placed it around Sarah's neck and fastened it. Each of them took care of her ear, and soon the earrings were in place. Then all three women turned to me. Dad, are these tears? asked June. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.